So this afternoon I am going to share with us the very important conclusion on where we left off last week, responding to the call of God. Learning some examples in Jesus' own life. It's January 20, what today? 27. January 27. And this is the last of my Christmas series, by the way. Do you realize that? Come on, put your hands together for yourself. Amen. I'm still preaching Christmas in January. Why is it so? Because the angels proclaimed something that was eternal. It was not only meant for one day. It was not only meant for a baby that was born. It was supposed to live with us forever and ever. They said glory to God, which inspires worship in our lives. And on earth, peace and goodwill towards men that inspires both a work for God and our walk in God. If we are going to be Christians who actually know what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ, stick to that birth, taking instructions from what came from the angels when that child was born, we would have to pay attention to the fact that we have been called to worship, we have been called to walk with God, and we have been called to work for God. So as a child of God, we can never say that we are only uh, Christians who just worship, but we are also Christians who worship and we walk. And in our walk, we see amazing things happen. You don't walk with God without walking with one another. But when we walk with God, and in walking with God, we walk with one another, we get to know the limitations of one another, we get to know the pain of one another, and we exert our lives, or we bring our lives to a point where we become a blessing to one another. But Paul said that if we are going to do that, and we have any Christian environment where that is done very properly, where you have the people who really know how to walk with God, in their walking with God, in that environment where they live, the Bible says that there will be love, and that love will be without hypocrisy. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 14. We would abhor that which is evil, and we will cling to what is good. In that environment, we will be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Will be devoted. Your burden is my burden. My blessing is your blessing. What I cry about, you cry about. But if the community is not genuine, and people are going through crisis and things, they are isolated and they are marginalized. But the gospel we have heard tells us that Jesus Christ came into the world that he will bring the marginalized into the middle to showcase them so that they become the epicenter or the center of heaven's focus for the praise and glory of God. And that is what you and I have been called to. How did Jesus respond to the work of the Father? Jesus responded to the will of the Father in four important ways that I would like us to go home with today. Number one, he did that very obediently. He did it in obedience. Luke chapter 2 verse 49, the Bible says that, and he said to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Looking at his family, he said, hey, you're looking for me, why? Don't you know that I have to be at the house of my father? Brothers and sisters in Christ, if the call of God is on your life, or as God calls all of us as children, there are times that we literally have to be in the house of the Lord with other children who belong to this house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus demonstrated it for us. He came to preach. What did he preach? He did not necessarily came, come to preach prophets to us. He did not necessarily come to preach our pockets will be full to us. He did not necessarily come to preach prosperity. He came literally to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? The gospel is John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Christ did not come to come and emphasize the goodness that God already has got in place for us. He came to tell us that if we will believe in him, all this goodness shall be ours. Let me tell you something, there is a will of God upon our lives, Amen. that each and every one of us will become messengers for him. Amen. Short of that, we are only consumers. It is time for us to also share what we have consumed. The gospel doesn't go around looking for faults in people. There is enough faults already. The gospel doesn't go about pushing people to the margins. We were on the margins already. Today I pray over your life. Amen. Whatever be your story. Through that story, 
Jesus is picking you from the margin, bringing you into the middle so you can become a messenger for him. Amen. We have to respond to that in all obedience. Hallelujah. How much do you know already of Christ? And how much have you said? And how many have followed you to come and listen to this Christ? You may be walking in Christ. You think people don't respect you. Let me tell you something. Heaven respects you because Christ is in you. Not until we open our mouth and speak, nobody can hear and therefore believe. Church, God is counting on you and I to be the mouthpiece that can bring to pass his glory and his purposes to the world we live in. So Jesus did this very proactively, quickly. He did it obediently. He did it with a sharp focus on the word. He proclaimed the word. So what are you talking about? I'm talking about Luke chapter 4 verse 43. Luke chapter 4 verse 43. And he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to who? To other cities also. Church, there is work for us. For I was sent for this purpose. I must preach to the other cities. God is expecting us to preach. If we withhold the gospel from being heard, we are withholding salvation from being received from those who need to hear it from us. Jesus did it obediently. Jesus did it with a focus on the gospel. Jesus did it and completed the work also. Luke chapter 12 verse 50. But I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. He looked at the work that he has to do. He said, boy, it is full of suffering, but I'm going to do it. I have to do it in spite of the suffering. We cannot do the work of Christ without a little suffering. It is not always that we have to have all the comforts of this world before we worship him. If you are a Christian who can only worship God on good days, when bad days come, woe betides you. Woe betides you. It is in your difficulties that when you lift up praise to God, God knows that yes, you really love me. The test of your true character in your walk with God is when things have gone bad and God is watching what you are going to do to serve him or not. Jesus said, oh, well, I got to do this work and I have to finish it. And guess what he did? In the story of him going to Jerusalem, he went to Jerusalem to go and embrace suffering. He said, I have to complete the work. Mm -hmm. And in completing the work, he has to embrace suffering. Yeah. How many of us want to run away from trouble? There is nothing at all that he allows to come our way that he has no ability to take us through it. Amen. When you don't go through it, there is no glory at stake. No, when you don't go through it, there is no glory given. When you are finished with it, there is a glory at stake. Amen. And he's just looking for people who will step into it to bring him that glory. Mm -hmm. Can you be one of those in your walk with him this year? The Holy Spirit just dropped into my spirit. He said, when you are seeking greatness, Never seek for visibility. Seek to be available. Mm -hmm. Seek availability, mm -hmm. not visibility. And the Lord will bring you from obscurity and place you in a place where through your life, through your suffering, through your uncompleted story, many shall come to know the Savior. Jesus went to Jerusalem, faced death in Jerusalem, and there was life. When you don't give God the opportunity to use that little trouble of yours. Mm -hmm. There can never be any glory that people will say, wow, you went through that. Glory be to God. Yeah. Remember this. Success in this world is mixed with suffering. We cannot succeed without discomfort. Wherever there is success in need, we are in need of success, there must always be a close eye on the cross rather than on comfort. Let's serve him obediently. Let's serve him actively. Let's serve him with a mind of bringing what he has called us to do to conclusion. Whatever it is that he would do this year, let's do it with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. And let's do it with the word of God rich in our lives, knowing that we are not doing it to man, but we are doing it to whom? We are doing it to whom? We are doing it to God. Hallelujah. What do we learn from the Christmas story? The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, and this is how I end. 
The angels heard, the angels preached, the shepherds heard it. The Bible said they got up, they said, Let us go, and they went. They went hurriedly. They were enriched with the word. They said, We cannot keep this word, we gotta go tell it. That is the gospel. Amen. And it's the gospel that Christ wants us to focus on. It is a gospel that comes with a cross. It is a gospel that cannot be kept inside. But the question is, how much do you believe in the gospel that you have received? Number two, how much do you value the fact that someone else needs to hear it? Number three, how much do you understand that people will be damned without hearing it? We don't have every day, we don't have forever to preach the gospel. There is a time limit to which people need to hear the gospel. Will you be useful in the hands of the Lord? That through you, men, women can hear this gospel. Remember, this gospel is something that has never happened before. It is a message that brings the rich and the poor together. It is a message that brings man and woman together. It is a message that brings the weak and the strong together. It is the message that makes sinners saints or makes saints out of sinners. It is a message that makes deviants become the destiny children of God. Amen. It is the message that Christ preached and it is the message that you must preach and it is the message that you carry. Will you give it up from this day? This is what he has called us to do. How willing are you to do it today? I leave you with this. He's giving you an opportunity to be his representative. From the margins to the middle, to be a messenger who carries the most meaningful message of the salvation of the world, without which men will perish. This year, we are called to work. I pray that God will anoint you to be well positioned for this. It is time to work liberty hours of worship. And I pray that God will find a worker in you so that you will make a difference. Amen. Bow your heads and let us pray.